a photographer who lives in Miami. I'm from Cuba. I am also a singer entertainer. Uh, I found that out a couple of years ago. Um, I love uh, living in Miami and I'm also gay. I was in, in high school. I, I, I knew that there was something that was different, but at the same time I wanted to conform. So I ended up marrying my high school sweetheart. We were married for three and a half years. I want to say that three of those years were miserable for her. And I made her life miserable. I hate to say it, but it's true. And I was beyond miserable. It, it, hiding and, and not realizing your own self. It's one of the worst things that I've been through in my life. So anyway, so, um, but then again, my family, you know, fashion and the Latins and, you know, Cubans and the macho thing. And it, most of you out there around my age know exactly what I'm talking about. So it was very, very, very difficult. I never did tell my parents. I did tell my mom. She, at this time, she wasn't speaking uh, at all. So she was alert, but she, and she could hear, but she wasn't responding. So I don't know what her what she would have said, I think she would have accepted it because I was her baby. Um, and then I did come out to my aunt and uncle and I told them and since then, you know, the last few years of their lives, I was openly gay and they knew, you know, my friends and it, it, was, it was good, but it's tough, it's tough. So the young people today have it a lot easier in, most of the time when uh, they have such support groups and they have such connections, it's much better these days, I think. Uh, it came out in 1978, slowly, very slowly, um, and was having a great time. Uh, disco, blah, 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 all the great stuff, and all of a sudden, my friends started dying. AIDS was here in the early 80s, so it was like a shock to the system going from just having a great time everybody having fun to seeing your young friends some even younger than me getting sick and dying the gay community lost so much plus the stigma that some of the very conservative and right-wing people and haters would put on the gay community by saying you see it's the plague it, God's punishment. So any anything that we had come forward to up to that point was totally erased because we had such a negative stigma. People were afraid of, first of all, of the disease. They didn't know what it was. They didn't want to hang around you. They didn't want to touch you. They didn't want to talk to you because they thought they would catch it. Um, so we had to overcome so much. Uh, Miami has changed in many things. Um, as a city, uh, artistically, I mean, this place was a wasteland. It was just where people came to die, period. Especially in Miami Beach. The hotels were filled with old people just waiting to die. That was it. Um, we've, we've come a long way. And for example, the other day, I, we had an event called Gay Ocho, first time ever, on Calle Ocho, which is the heart of Little Havana, where Cubans ground zero. And it was amazing to see drag queens, um, men holding hands, kissing, hugging each other, carrying on in a fun way, partying with the older Cubans that were there, the business owners, the restaurant owners. Everybody was so welcoming. It was amazing that this has been able to happen because the Cubans can be very, very prejudiced when it comes to homosexuality. It, it, it just says so much about how far we have come as a society, uh, as people accepting and understanding and, and saying, you know what, okay, so they're, so they're gay, so big deal. That is what, it's like we say, oh, okay, so they're straight, they have 15 kids, who cares? It's to each its own, and that, and, and that event on Calle Ocho signified so much, so much.